This is the OTP presented by Farm Bureau Health Plans. No matter your life stage, you can plan on Farm Bureau Health Plans for great health care coverage with a sensible price tag. Visit FBHP.com. With Amy Wells, I'm Mike Keith. And our old friend Sarah Walsh is here. She's now known as NFL Network Sarah Walsh. But you were on WKRN here how long? Three years. Is but that all? That's it. But I feel like I was here in a really good special time. I mean, obviously, I'm completely biased, but I, I was even talking about it today. The last, it feels like the Titans never obviously get the national love I think that they deserve. I mean, even when you're the number one seed in the AFC, I've, I've seen it. I've seen this team in, in all different incarnations, and it felt like the last time that it, it was like this national situation. I mean, I was here in the years of Eddie George, Steve McNair, Keith Bullock, Frank Wycheck, Javon Kurse. I mean, this was this locker room of, to me, and I was much younger in my career, but you walked in that locker room and it was these superstar players that I felt like nationally got a lot of attention for, for Tennessee. Now, so what is your job with NFL Network specifically now? Um, anything and everything they ask. No. Okay. <laughs> um, so for the last three years, uh, I have been primarily down in Tampa because there was a quarterback there that – Yeah. You know, demanded a lot of attention. He didn't demand it, but, um, you know, nationally he is Tom Brady. So I, I've spent the last couple of years covering Tom Brady and the Buccaneers. Um, and that and that wasn't never really solely my job, but it became solely my job. So now um, I'm sort of, uh, I, I don't want to say I'm a free agent because I work for NFL Network, but now um, I can go to other teams. And uh, not that I couldn't go to other teams before, but there was just never a situation that well, they were I like, mean, let's skip the coverage but on it's Tom. Uh, it's okay yeah. that you say that because, I mean, Tom Brady was that kind of big deal that I mean I guess Patrick Mahomes is that he can I mean he could I he mean, has a chance to potentially catch he, Brady a lot of things have to go right but you know B- Patrick Mahomes is the face of the league I don't think that that's right you, you can't really argue that but Tom now. Brady was a face beyond just the his NFL. era we're talking greatest of all time right yes and, but you're talking about also a super I mean he was married to a supermodel yep. he he went to another team and then that was a story because they won the Super Bowl and I, I mean if I'm NFL Network I'm going to cover every move Tom Brady correct. makes correct and people always ask me too, you know this idea that he's just a regular football player I'm like he's not though because to your point this is a guy that like if you this is he sat in front of me uh, when Bruce Arians retired and he did his press conference Tom came in the room he sits in front of me and it's one of the rooms that I don't know if you guys still have it here but back in my day it was like an auditorium room sure. so they have the you know like your old college like you've got the thing that you can put your phone on and I remember Tom is sitting in front of me and his phone's there and it was turned over but I'm like who's on that phone like right now like who's texting that phone we're not talking it's not just like another star quarterback we're talking billionaires we're talking sure. people that tra- like far outside of football I mean he's just a different he and so the best way I could explain to him he's just a different level it's not just hey this guy's the best in the NFL he's on a different like level in the entertainment in, in all of those worlds all right I got one more yeah. are you convinced he's retired yes I okay. think he is now there there's always been a, I'll tell you what when he was going to step away or we felt like we saw a lot of things in Tampa that made you think it was his last season when there was a little bit of could Vrabel get him? Because, you know, they have a connection from the Patriots. I was like, this is going to be great for me. I'll just continue on. I'll go back to Nashville, Tennessee, where I still have a home. Like, w- let's keep it going. Um, so, no, I do think he's he's done. I mean, he's been off on, like, a yacht overseas all summer. I mean, to- if Tom thought he was playing, Tom would be working, working, working. So, yes, I think that chapter has finally closed. He seems like he's living his best life. But it of also course. seems like... <laughs> You're living your best life in a lot of ways. I feel like we see you on TV all of the time, and we see you in so many different spaces and doing so many different things. What stories are you most excited about following throughout the 2023 season now that Tom Brady's on a yacht somewhere? There's so many things. Um, I was recently at Panthers training camp, and Bryce Young is could be a new up-and-coming, and it's one of those things where I always say it's difficult for me to look at practice and in, when you're in the minutia of drills, when you're in the mundane, until you get in a game situation, it's hard to see certain things. We went to Panthers practice, and you could see Bryce Young's really good. Like, there's just something. There's that it factor. There was, like, an excitement. Um, so, like, I potentially could be dealing with them. I've been in Jacksonville 
uh, pr- if it wasn't the Bucks, it was with Jacksonville. They have. I know this. This might be a bad topic here on th- on this particular no, it's uh, okay. show. That's uh, okay. They're just. We they're can really. Them. They're really excited down there. There's an energy. They sure, um, again. They they've mm-hmm. been. They have been. This isn't. Like, I'm not gonna sugar it. They've been bad for a long time. Mm-hmm. And last year, I was in training. This is what's cool about the NFL, and I've talked about this before in terms of parity. A year ago, we go to Jacksonville. They're coming off that debacle season. They were hoping to just improve a little bit. They're just hoping to improve. Um, they don't. They they're like we, we're never going to pick number one overall again. They did it two years in a row. It was dire down there for them, and so they'd like to see improvement. You know, it, and and I don't know that they envisioned that it would have turned out to be as an exciting finish as it was for them. I know at some point that was at the Titans expense, but they were a fun story of a team that was looking at the league's worst record to at one point going into Arrowhead in the playoffs right. and taking it to the Chiefs. I right. mean, they really, like, people thought that wasn't going to be a game. It was a game. Um, and so I always think, too, going into the preseason, I'm like, who's the Jaguars that we're not talking about? Who had three wins last season that you're giving, that nobody's giving any chance to, but that you you can turn it around overnight here in some regards. Um, it doesn't happen for everybody, but every year there's teams in the playoffs that weren't in the playoffs a season ago. Well, and the other part of it, too, is that's always how it happens. Yep. When you mm-hmm. least expect it, it just all of a sudden becomes a tidal wave. It's the coolest thing. You know, when we got good in 99, we'd been 8-8 and three straight years, and then all of a sudden we go to the Super Bowl. The Rams on the other side had won four games the year before. And you see that that whole thing happen. I think that's the best thing about the NFL. That's why it's so exciting. Again, you can sit there and be down on your luck, and things can change. And actually... Um, and I'm gonna now I'm gonna botch this stat, but I was talking to you about that I was on Good Morning Football this summer, and we did this segment called "What If," like name something that happened in the NFL. What if it didn't happen? How would it change fates? And I said, "What if the Music City Miracle didn't happen?" And it, now I'm gonna botch the stat because I've lost it. But after that game, which obviously knocked Buffalo out, they didn't see a postseason for, and I'm ruining now, over almost 20 like 20 years. years. Yeah, yeah, it was 20 years. So to think that you're that close, that game's over, Buffalo's going to the postseason, to lose the way that they lost, and to think if you would have told the Buffalo Bills fans in the hour after the Music City Miracle happens, hey, guys, buckle up because you're not going back to the postseason for 20 years? Like, <laughs> that's insane. I, I mean, it, it's like when you fall, and, and they were the most successful playoff team of the 90s, even though they didn't win a Super Bowl, they were in the playoffs yeah. seemingly every year and competitive and went to Super Bowls and – but when you fall off the cliff, too, it's like when you ride the tidal wave up, you somebody else rides the tidal wave down. And, you know, we went nine years without a playoff appearance here. And you don't think when we lose that game to Baltimore at the end of 2008 that we're supposed to win yep. and that we're not even going to make it back to the playoffs for nine years – um, you're like, oh, my goodness. It's I, crazy. It is crazy. Which is why you always say don't take it for granted. Sure. And, and there's guys that get to the Super Bowl, and we've heard this a million times over, that go to a Super Bowl in their first year, lose it, but you always think, well, I'll be back. And you don't know if you ever get back. Um, it's just crazy. I think specifically for Tennessee, I've always thought, Mike, as someone that worked here, that the Titans, no matter what they do, never got enough credit. You know what I mean? Like even when this team, like two years removed from being the top team in the AFC. Right. And what do you hear about? You hear about. The Chiefs, the Bills, like, like right. you, the Patriots for the longest time. And I just feel like, and and people here in Tennessee know that you're sort of like insulated in you know in in our world of like I just feel like they've never gotten nationally the love that at times they've deserved. But don't you think, Amy? That's I, I don't think it's a chip on the shoulder thing. I think it's we don't have a Brady or a Manning here. We haven't had a Brady or a Manning. People can now fly into Nashville easier, which which helps because the media comes in here a lot more than they did back when you were at Channel Two. But I, I just think the, the other thing is, too, we, we don't play a run-and-gun style and gain 500 yards a game and yep. score 40 points. I mean, we're the, bl- we're the bl- team that very much matches its city. We're the hardcore, yep. tough guy, workhorse, bl- like, yep. blue-collar, Eddie George, Derrick Henry sort of thing. And I, I think to be a story, you've got to have a stylized point. The guy who really brings us there – I think is Vrabel. Yeah, yeah, I think that... Because he's very interesting. I think Mike Vrabel is the guy that brings us kind of the, the sex appeal that this team didn't have for a long time. I agree. Just because he's got the personality, he's got the attachment to the Patriots, he's got the successful playing career. He'll s- he'll give you the sound bite that kind of goes viral and that will be played in lots of different places. But th- the supporting cast, if you can call it that, that is the roster is made up of a lot of guys that you kind of go, oh, yeah, 
I've heard of him or oh yeah I've seen him he's play really before. good or, yeah. yeah oh yeah, yeah he's he's on his second swing of whatever which for us is great as a team we've got a team made up of guys that are really fighting for it and they want it really bad because they're on their their second go around they're getting another crack at it they're getting another opportunity but for everybody else they're like Oh, that was a bust, right? He's bust guy. Well, no, he's not bust guy. He's a great player, but it, it's just a very different story here. And I think that, to your point, it gets lost in the in uh, the machine of the NFL right. and all of the personalities and all of the big stars. So I can see both sides of it, but I think the Titans as a franchise – thrive on that i think it's almost Being become the under yeah. sort of not in the spotlight i think it's yeah. become part of their identity is that like we could win it we could not the stories will be the same so let's sneak up on them and i like that i i like that i think it makes the team tough and scrappy Sar- i like tough and sarah scrappy. walsh has to leave the snickers heart hot seat I to know. go Take a snicky. Take a Snickers. Yeah, for the take plane. one on your way out. Guys, you guys, this is like when you trick or treat at people's houses, and you're like, they gave you the full size See, kit. Like, yeah. just this. Yeah. Spare no expense here, Titans yes. fans. Yes. Like, That's these are not the bite size. We're this not is playing. a full. This we're is a full you Snickers. You can have one. Yeah. You can I can uh, take one. You can today. take yeah. one. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so fa- final question before you depart. How many of the NFL Network shirts do you have? Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> how, do you have how much to I'm pay gonna, for them? We do don't pay for them. So, okay. wait. I'm at, this is probably going to get me fired, Mike. So, um, no, it's okay. I'll I know be back Charlie Uke. He's a great guy. I love Charlie Uke. Uh, every year, they send us, you know, like, if, if you're going two weeks in a row and you can't wash anything, then you need a bunch. They would send, like, a huge amount of shirts. And I'm like, I don't need, first of all, I was mostly in Florida, and it's always hot. So, I'm always sure. going to go sleeveless. They send us so many shirts, and I'm like, I, so every year I'm like, I don't, you guys don't even have to send me any. I'm good, I'm good. And they're like, no, we need to send, send it. A new they one. send like a new box. This year, until today, we were wearing NFL Plus shirts. There's a big difference there, Mike. It says ah. NFL Plus, Sorry. NFL Network. I got to just transition today to NFL Network. Um, so Exciting. yeah, I've got, I've got a, but you can't exact closet full. You can't exactly wear those out to dinner in Tampa because it's like, oh look, Sarah Wallace wants everybody to know she works for NFL. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't yeah. like, but like I'll run into Target sometimes. Sure. Sometimes there's breaks in between practice, and I'm not. Yeah, I don't want people. I don't. <laughs> Uh, I feel like it looks like I'm out, like walking around yeah, like this. Hey, and, like yeah, yeah, look at me. <laughs> yeah. Put it this way, Mike. I have more NFL Network shirts than I have WKRN shirts. They did not give me a litany of WK. Although I did have some WKRN polos I wore in training camp. I will say, I think about it. I have these live <laughs> shots from training camp back in the day, and uh, I did have a WKRN polo. I remember it was navy blue. Sarah, get out of here. Okay, you I got a flight to get. <laughs> it's so good to see you. Thank you so much. I hope um, we're very proud of you here. By oh, the way, we're thank like you. we know her. We oh, know. thank yeah. you. I um I have obviously such a special place in my heart for Tennessee. Uh, I I still have a home here, like I said, and um, I was just asked downstairs while Vrabel was talking. So do you get to be up here this season? Because you know there's Tom has left the league, and I'm like it's on you guys. Like you guys are good. Like I feel like I will be up here. So, so then you're um, going to be up here. Motivation. I would love it. So you're going to be up here. So if Vrabel and those guys could just consider that. This like is a better team than what people know. I'm telling you. I Well, like, let's go. I'm happy to be here. All right, get out of here. <laughs> okay. Leave. So See you guys. Walsh. Leaving the OTP. I mean, as we're doing this, she's throwing she's the running. headset down. She's <laughs> running out the door. Tighten up. All right, so with Sarah Walsh having departed, it's time for us to let you know, hey, Titans fans, hey, OT people, it's always game on with Duncan, so grab a coffee and kick off the action, whether that's drinking a cup of coffee on your way to the game or grabbing one to go before watching or listening to the game at home. Duncan is always there to help you get your game on. Just like the pros, we need to be at our best come game time which is why Duncan is the most important part of your game day ritual because it's always the best call for football. America runs on Duncan. And the game Saturday is at noon. The game Saturday is at noon. So you're going to need coffee because it's the first game. Yeah. You're not ready for this. (laughs) Well, you're not. (laughs) You're a bit. The people have been in training camp too. The OT people? Training. I, I mean, I hope I'm You're ready. You're not ready for well, this. Well, but I mean, it's August the 12th. I know. It it's is. at noon. It's not a 7 o'clock game. Yeah. You need Duncan. You need your coffee. You do. I, I had a box of 25 munchkins this morning. Golly, it was good. By the way, you've changed seats. You're now in the Snickers hot seat. I, I've moved over. And you're wearing over. a coat. <laughs> this I'm is d- amazing how I'm this works. Comfy. I'm hydrating. There you I'm go. I'm closer to the Snickers. Yes. Okay. Well, we're yeah. glad. We're glad to see you there. Um, Thanks. 
I, I want to go over something as we get ready for the first preseason game, and I want to call it three to C. Okay. Each of us, Mike Keith and Amy Wells, will pick three players that we want to see against the Bears. All right. All right. For, like the, for the Titans. I'm going to take out the kickers. Okay. Caleb, because you got to see the kickers. We've got to see. I mean, we all know that. All of the OT people are saying, oh, which one of them is going to say the kicker? I mean, no, we're not. We're <laughs> Shocker. <laughs> spoiler alert. We're not. Because we, <laughs> we everybody wants to see what's – the Titans have to pick a kicker between Caleb Shudek and Trey Wolf. Right. And that's so, a given. That's a given. And then you're going to say, oh, you're going to say the backup quarterbacks. No. You all want to see Malik Willis, and you all want to see Will Levis. We all do. Yeah. So they're out. Because okay. we, we understand we want to see them run the offense. I mean, we could go through all of the coach speak about the kickers and the quarterbacks. We get it. Okay. So those are off the table. They're off the table. So we will go back and forth. Okay. Three to C. Amy Wells, you get to pick one first. I think my first one is going to be wide receiver Kyle Phillips. And I'll tell you why. Kyle Phillips showed up for training camp and his body looked different. He is still not a big dude. He will never be a big dude. His just skeleton won't allow for that. But he looks like he has become more sturdy. Sturdier. He looks a little more built. And I think that that is going to go a long way with helping him stay healthy. He's going to be more durable. We saw him have some of the highest highs and lowest lows within like a, a matter of minutes. Place. Yeah, that you never see. You never see someone that high and that low within the same five minutes of each other. And so I think there's so much potential there. Throughout camp, we've seen him make plays. He's more confident in this offense. He's more confident in his abilities. I'm excited to see him get on the field and really see what he can do in a game because I think he's going to be a little more sturdy, a little more durable, a little more confident, and hopefully that leads to more consistent. And I've said multiple times, I'll try not to repeat it, I think the addition of DeAndre Hopkins means he probably has to play less offensive snaps, which should make him more effective. Right. And the, the biggest area where he can help this team, he can be the best punt returner this team has had since Mark Mariani. Which is so exciting. And this team hasn't returned a punt for a touchdown in nearly 10 years. Right. And really hasn't gotten much out of the punt return game overall. Um, that's an area where if he's able to concentrate on it, mm -hmm. if he's not so winded, if he's not so, you know, whatever – then he's not going to fumble a punt. He's, he's not going to put that pressure on himself. He's going to do what we saw him do on the first punt return of the year and what we saw him do in training camp. So I think that's a, that's a good one because I don't think there would be very many people among the OT people who would think Kyle Phillips cannot help this football team. He clearly can help this football team. He has shown that he can help this football team. Absolutely. And in a very specific role – in a very specific role where this team has not always had that guy. They've gone looking for that guy in several different places. If he stays healthy, I, I mean, I think, he's a, I think he's a winner in this offense. I think he's a guy where almost less is more for him. I think if he can focus in on what he needs to do and not need to do all of the things, I think it's going to be beneficial all the way around. I think he will be a better punt returner. I think he'll be a better receiver if he is able to focus in on what he does really well and do it to the best of his ability. My first of the three to see is defensive tackle Jaden Peavy, who wore 72 last year, and he appeared in one game. He's wearing number 92 now. 6'5", listed at 308, first-year man out of Texas A&M. Probably weighs less than 308. He has slimmed down some. He still has the amazing... 36 inch plus arms it's like 36 and an eighth or 36 and a quarter which makes him crazy long to be able to get into an offensive lineman he had a great off season he's taken a lot of snaps uh the acting coach for this week's game uh terrell williams who is the defensive line coach says this is a guy who's made a move can he make a move to the point where he's on the active roster for all of the talk about the off-season program and 
you know, OTAs and the mini camps, and we've done everything. We've been great in meetings. It's still about executing and making plays. In his case, for what you're asked to do as an interior offensive lineman, you're not asked to make every tackle. You're not asked to sack the quarterback on every play, but you're asked to do your job well enough where you're getting that penetration, you're getting that knockback, you're staying in your gaps, and then do all of those responsibility things and still be able to make some plays. So I'm very interested to see Jaden Peavy play against the Chicago Bears. I think that's a good point that you made about being able to take all of the progress that someone like PV has made throughout the offseason. You've heard about it mentally how well he's doing, physically how conditioned he is and how well he's doing in that regard. But now being able to put it all together on the field, that's like the last step, the last piece of the puzzle. Right. So being able to see that thread pulled all the way through the offseason, that was a good one, Mike. Thank you. I like that one. Remind you too, open a Titans checking account from Pinnacle with at least $100 and a recurring direct deposit by August the 18th. And you could get two tickets to five Titans home games. Details at TitansBanking.com. Titans checking from Pinnacle. Play hard, bank easy. Member FDIC. So I'm going to go back to offense. Okay. Um, and I guess, I guess I've got a returner thing because I'm kind of sticking in that realm. Tajay Spears is the guy I'm excited to see. And obviously we know that he is very gifted as a running back. We know that there's some excitement around what he can provide for this offense as a compliment to Derrick Henry. And will we see all of that in the preseason? Meh, we don't know. Right. I mean, you don't see more of the fancy stuff, right. really, some of the trickery and that uh, in those first preseason games. That's not really what it's we're all here It's very for. hard to tell, to, to further your point, it's very hard to tell about the run game in the preseason because – you're not scheming up in anything in the run game. Yeah. You're not trying to outflank anybody. You're just kind of trying to make plays and see run what the ball. you got here. Right. Yeah. yeah. So uh, will we see all of that? I don't know. But the kick return game is something that's very interesting to me. And I think there's a lot of opportunity for him there as a returner. I think that there's uh, – it, there's just a lot of excitement about some of the other things that he can provide beyond just the running back stuff. Um, that's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm excited to really see is where he can plug in there and where he can make a name for himself beyond just being the other guy with 22. I want to see the shake. And that's, yes. that's what he showed us at the Reese's Senior Bowl. That's why when they picked him in the third round, I was excited, even though many thought they should take another position, uh, like a tight end or a wide receiver. I thought that's a guy you can't pass up because what he has that very few players have is he's got shake. And if he can show that on a kick return, running the ball, catching a pass, I think that will get Titans fans excited because the more it's like the media out at practice at Ascension St. Thomas Sports Park has become excited about him watching him because like, oh, it's Look. like watching a video game. It's yeah, it's like oh, what oh, what is that? You know, because <laughs> he's not the biggest guy, and he's not the fastest guy, and yet there's something about like when he's in the one-on-one -on -one tackling drills, and the guy has to come to balance and decide which way he's going to go. I mean, it's very difficult because there is an element to him that is just God-given. It's shake. Yeah, it, it's hard to describe. I mean, shake is the right thing, but I can't talk about him without, like, moving my whole body That's somehow. Right. You know, it's like I can't find the word for exactly what it is that he does. It's like a, a – I, can't, like I can't say it. I just have to move. Some people have shake. I know, and that that's what it is. It's shake. I, don't, I, I guess I've never thought about it before, but it's just – it's a, it's a, a way of life. So it's, 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 it's not, shake. It's not learned. No. It, I mean, you can learn how to master it. It's a God-given It's a God-given, yeah. There's something about him that is just totally different. I'm so glad that we have added video to the OTP because I can't, because I can't articulate it. You've I just have to move. You've shown the shake. <laughs> <laughs> there All right. you go. So my second of the three to see is Reggie Robertson. No. Oh. Um, I, I mean, this guy has shown up as a wide receiver. The back end of the wide receiver core is not set. We know that. 
There are going to be a lot of guys battling. We're going to see Kyrus Jackson from Georgia, an undrafted rookie. Uh, we're going to have a chance to see Treshawn Harrison. Uh, obviously, Mason Kenzie is still fighting for a spot. Uh, there, you know, Colton Dow, the seventh round pick, is fighting at the back end of the roster. Reggie Robertson is a guy that when he's good, he is really, really good. And for the most part, he's been really, really good in practice. Inconsistency is what has been the bugaboo for him through his time. Now, he's he's come back from – fully come back from the surgery now from a couple years ago. He looks more confident. He's playing faster. I, I think he may have a chance to show big, but we'll see. I mean, this is this is certainly his moment. That's uh, that was a good one too. You've got a good list. Well, over there, let's Mikey. see what your third one looks like. Okay, so my third one, I'm going to the defensive side of the ball now. We've got to switch at some point here. Um, Monty Rice. Okay. I'm excited to see what he is going to be able to do. The poor guy has struggled with injuries throughout his career as a Titan, um, and I think that that has kind of it's like he's never been able to really get traction. You know, we've seen some good things from him. Obviously, he's familiar with this defense. He's familiar with this team. You just want to see him get his wheels on the ground and really take off. And so that's what I'm excited to see. I'm excited to see him healthy. I'm excited to get to see him get in the rotation, really see what he can bring to the defense. I think that I think there's a lot to watch. I think that that linebackers group is kind of an exciting group. It is. And so I'm excited to see what he's able to bring to it and where he's able to kind of find his niche. Niche? Where he's able to find his niche? I say niche. Well, but n- on, on HGTV, they say niche. Yeah, so it could be a niche niche. Yeah. I guess it's how, how it's fancy you are. It's a niche space, but if you're just calling it the space by its name, it's a niche. A niche? Yes. Well, I'm hoping he finds a spot. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, Aziz Al Shire is the leader of that group. Right. And I don't think I'm breaking any news by saying, I mean, he's just come in and it's just like I'm the boss. And yeah, that's, he the fits. Way, that's the way this runs. And then you've got Jack Gibbons, who's really playing well, and Chance Campbell, who's come back from injury and, and he's playing well. And then they bring in a guy like Ben Neiman who's a veteran linebacker, and the other guy that they bring in, Luke Gifford, who can play inside linebacker, he has great length, and he's going to be a special team stalwart. So, I mean, there's a there's sort of a squish in that area. You yeah. know, there's a there's a, a tightening of all of that at so the linebackers. So can he separate himself? Well, somebody's going to have to. Yep. That's a great point. Watch the linebackers. Yep. Uh, my final of the three to see is Adam Rupsich. 6'6", 318 out of Culver, Stockton. Hmm. That's in Missouri, right? Sure. You're from Missouri. You don't know that? Well, I mean, I don't know all of the uh, places How do you in not? Missouri. How do I not? Yes. Well, not everybody is as well-versed in their home state as you are, Mike Keith. Okay, fine. <laughs> um, Rupsich comes out of this very small program, and he is... Six six three eighteen, and I think Andrew would be that big even if he weren't a football player. Yeah, just a naturally. He's a large naturally human. large human. He's got some athleticism. He's competitive. Uh, he was on the practice squad all of last year. He took a red shirt, which he needed, and has transformed his body. Is playing different positions. And my question about him is, I, I don't think Andrew, I don't think at this time at least, that Andrew Rupsich is probably a starter on September 10th at New Orleans. But the question becomes, does Andrew Rupsich make the team as the eighth or the ninth offensive lineman because he can play multiple positions? There are several guys that would be competing in that area with Nicholas petit Frere suspended for the first six games you would have uh, a John Leglu, who p- has played some some ball for the Steelers at different points. Uh, they've just brought in a veteran player in Justin Murray, who would be fighting for that. They've just brought in a veteran player in Jimmy Murray, who is fighting for that because you're you're looking for guys outside the first five who can be part of your aid on game day 
and probably part of your nine offensive linemen on the roster. Um, could could Rupsich be back on the practice squad? Sure, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. but I'm wondering, does he take the step? Because you just don't see many guys, and the Titans have two of them right now: Jalen Duncan, who they drafted out of Maryland, and Andrew Rupsich. Great size. Yeah. Naturally, I mean, Duncan's six six three oh five, and he's another one. He would be that big a man, no matter what. And the reason I say that is. When you're that big a human naturally, you're generally a better athlete because you're not bulking up or you're, you know, this is who you are. This is how you, it's like ben, how Ben Jones was. Ben Jones was a great baseball player because he was naturally as big as he was. And so his athleticism was, was you know, caught up with his body size, so to speak. Right. And those people are so valuable to oh. any team, but especially to this team where, it, you've got to have that depth. You've got to have those guys that can fill in in multiple different places. It's just so useful to have. And even if he were to end up, either one of those guys were able to end up on a practice squad, it's still so valuable because of the grind of a sure. regular season. And you've got a lot of football to play, and you're taking a beating at that position uh, all along the offensive line. You need to have that depth. You need to have those people that you can rely on to say, all right, next man up, let's go. I think that over the years we've seen what a premium there is on guys who are big, who are naturally gifted and strong and can fill in in a lot of different places. So being able to find a couple of them to have just to help this team, awesome. Amy's three to see in Chicago, wide receiver Kyle Phillips, number 18. Running back, potentially kick returner, Tajay Spears, number 32. Linebacker, Monty Rice, number 56. My three to see in Chicago, 76, Adam Rupsich, offensive line. 80, Reggie Robertson, wide receiver. 92, defensive lineman, Jaden Peavy. We both agreed to stay away from the kickers, Caleb Shudak and Trey Wolf, and the quarterbacks, Malik Willis and Will Levis, because those were obvious. Mike, I didn't break the rules a single time you in didn't. this game. Coach Mack would be so proud. I know. Breaking news for Titans fans out there that you're going to want to hear. It's official. SeatGeek is the official ticketing partner of your Tennessee Titans. You think I'm kidding, but I'm not. The deal is finalized. SeatGeek is the newest member of the Titans family. If you haven't heard the name yet, it's because you haven't been listening to the OTP. Come on. Shame on you. Get used to it because you'll be hearing SeatGeek a lot more this season. Whether you're buying or selling tickets to Titans games or any live event in Nashville, SeatGeek is the place to do it. SeatGeek is the new official ticketing partner of the Tennessee Titans. So... Titans fans can fan. Amy Wells knows the lingo. I've just um, memorized You've at done this well. Point. All right. So want to discuss as we wrap up, and by the way, s- thanks to Sarah Walsh for coming by. Yeah. It was so great to she, see her. Very proud of her. Yeah. She was she was very nice when she was here at WKRN, and uh, she's done well, and that's one of those people you always pull for, and I'm very happy that she's a, a big star nationally now. I hope she's coming around more this season. I do, too. Yeah. The... Head coach for Saturday's game at Chicago will be Terrell Williams. Yeah. And he's the defensive line coach. This does, does not surprise me because Mike Vrabel made him the assistant head coach in the offseason. And in talking about it and in discussing this move this week, Mike brought up something interesting. He said that Big T, as he's called around here, you know, at, at times, to be honest, we have had to stop and look and see, oh, it's Terrell Williams, because everybody's just like, hey, T, hey, Big T. Yeah, and sometimes uh, you forget. Well, I mean, he's just like the nicest guy. Yeah. He has a relationship with people throughout the team. Yeah. He is a coach that transcends just the defensive line or the defensive room. He has a relationship throughout the ball club. And who does that make me think of? Mike Vrabel. Oh, and yeah. you and you think about this. One of the reasons DeAndre Hopkins said he was interested in Tennessee is that he had a relationship with Mike Vrabel that really didn't have much to do with football. He just liked him. He they talked about things. He was a guy that reached out beyond barriers. He wasn't 
a position coach who just tried to stay focused in on his area and acted like other positions didn't exist or another side of the ball didn't exist. I, I think it's an exciting thing, and I think the players – think it's a very exciting thing because they like Terrell Williams so much. Absolutely. I think that it's a great opportunity for Big T, Terrell Williams, um, to to expand and kind of get that experience and get that um, exposure to what kind of the grind of being a head coach looks like and what that cadence is like in that routine. Um, and I think the players are excited for him and they're responding to it. You know, they uh, – they're excited about having the opportunity to uh, almost make him look good. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, does sure. that make sense? Of course. Um, to have the opportunity to show him off and what he's able to do. Because coaching and the performance on the field, they are so intertwined. Sure. So I think that that's something the whole team is responding to. And listen, this is the most Mike Vrabel move you could possibly see. Him having the idea to do this, he said – that it was something he thought about during the off season, and then it all kind of came together. Um, and I think that this is Mike Vrabel doing what Mike Vrabel does, which is caring about the people that are around him, caring about his staff, wanting to invest in them beyond just winning a football game, beyond just prepping for the season. This is an opportunity to invest in that coach's future. It's an opportunity to invest in this team and the culture as a whole showing that, hey, when you show me that you deserve an opportunity, I'm giving you the opportunity. Sure. And that is so uh, on message with what he says all of the time. And he is continuing to put his money where his mouth is and just build relationships. I, I think three things. Number one, it's a great thing for the organization to do. Mm -hmm. I think, number two, uh, Terrell Williams is already getting a lot of publicity, and most people in, around the NFL did not know who he was because, you honestly, you cannot name 32 defensive line coaches in the NFL. No. Most people who love the NFL couldn't name but three or four. And yet now you're going to know this name, and as Sarah Walsh and Ian Rappaport and Scott Pioli were here today from NFL Network, that's certainly a focus of, of what they do, so that's a good thing. I think the other thing, too, is – it gives the team a little sort of jolt mm -hmm. for a first preseason game. It makes it a little more interesting. It kind of focuses them in just a little bit more. Now, I don't think it's going to be the difference in winning and losing the game because winning and losing in the preseason is not the big thing. But Mike is looking for any advantage to add a little focus, to add a little spin, to add a little interest he does it in practice. He does it with things like this. He does it in meetings. He does it with what we're doing next week with the Titans Foundation Luncheon, which on, on August the 15th, we're having the Foundation Luncheon at the Grand Hyatt to raise money for the Titans Foundation, which gives away a lot of money. It'll be the first time we've ever had the whole team, the whole team yeah. at any event since we've been here. Awesome. I mean, that's it's hard. Awesome. It's hard to do. Yeah, it it's, is. it's not that people didn't care. But so he thinks that's going to be a big deal as the team's on their way to Minnesota to practice. So that's something the whole team can do together. That's like this, you know. And, and so I, I think everybody's first thought who knows anything about what we do here, they've been like, wow, cool. Good yeah. for Big T and, and good for – you know, the organization overall, good for Vrabel. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just think a perfect thing. Yeah, I think it's it's a shakeup. <laughs> well, and, again, it's and it will be interesting for Vrabel, too, because when he was out for the game a couple years ago when he got COVID, he had to be at home because he was obviously sick. Right. And he said he thought that was valuable as he watched it. It will be an interesting viewpoint, too, to kind of see the dynamics of the communication among the staff and to look at the side his sideline from a different standpoint than what he knows. He won't learn everything because it's not a regular season game, but he's always looking to pick up one or two little things that they can do better. And that's the, uh, the other part of this that I think is so interesting and so beneficial is that 
I, it's not like Mike Vrabel's going to be out of town. Right. He's not going to be at the house. He's not going to Vegas. Yeah, no, he's going to be there. He's going to be able to observe. He's going to be able to be hands-on in a different way. It gives everybody the opportunity to kind of readjust the kaleidoscope. Right. And the picture comes into focus a little bit differently. What can you glean in that time that you take into the regular season that you notice? Maybe you want to tweak or adjust. Maybe you could glean that Tajay Spears has a little shake. Oh, there you go. Yeah. A little shake. Yes, that's uh, going to be a meme I or, think or there's a gif. Or <laughs> oh, my gosh. Uh, I don't need any of those. Yes. Um, I think there's so many good things that can come out of this. I'm so excited for everyone involved, for the players, for the coaches, for Big T, for Mike Vrabel. I think this is great. 10 out of 10 decision. All right, so a couple things that we want to mention as we finish up this edition of the OTP that is sponsored by our tremendous friends from Farm Bureau Health Plans. See how much you can save on your health coverage with Farm Bureau Health Plans. Get a quote at fbhp.com. If you go to the Titans YouTube channel, Mm -hmm. you can watch a program called Titans Camp Rewind. Yes. And it's sort of some of the features that have been done during the course of the week what's going on with the ball club, be something to get you ready for the Chicago game that you would really enjoy. That's at the Titans YouTube channel. We did one last week. It was really well received. Bless you all for watching. Hopefully more will watch this week. We're trying to do one a week through training camp. Titans YouTube channel. Titans radio on the air Saturday, 11 a.m. Central from Soldier Field in Chicago. Kickoff at 12.02 Central Time. Titans and the Bears preseason game number one. It's happening, Mike Key. I know. Are you so excited? I am. Hearing you give, like, you know it's football time when Mike Keith is telling you the Titans radio programming schedule. That's right. Like, that's how you know. That's what I've been waiting months and months for. Oh, oh, I have goosebumps. I was talking to my mom, and, and she said, uh, you know, where am I going to watch the game? I said, well, you know. you're going to listen to it. I said, well, it. you could listen to the game. She goes, no, I'd rather watch. <laughs> <laughs> that hurts. My dad was telling me the other day that his <laughs> tips and tricks for syncing up the TV to the radio. We're going to have to have him on the OTP to discuss that. Yeah, I, I mean, he, my man's got a, a a whole like plan. This is how well, he, he does is it. Doctor Wells, I know, he's but a pretty bright guy. I was very impressed by uh, he's got it refined to an art now. He does. Yep. All right, so we're coming to you from Chi Town. You can bet that there will be some Chicago style pizza. Oh, I mean. You can bet that there will be some football, and here we go. OT people, here we go. It's happening. It's happening. Thanks so much for joining us. For Amy Wells and Sarah Walsh, I'm Mike Keith, and you've been listening to the OTP. Tight